Welcome to the Inverted Upside Down. You're listening to Paranormal Now with Alan B. Smith. Rebroadcast on the Unex Network, Thursdays at 11 p.m. Pacific, Fridays at 2 a.m. Eastern. However you are and whenever you are, welcome to Paranormal Now. This is Alan B. Smith. Join us as we traverse the cosmic highway of paranormal portals and tantalizing turnoffs tonight. With me is Mario Gangora, as you see here on screen, with a fantastic background, by the way. Um, and he is the podcast producer of Yes, This Happened. And a lot happens on that podcast, which we will talk about tonight. Um... For instance, what happens when a Ouija board spells out the word danger on its own? Um, if you're a fan of the paranormal, you're going to absolutely love his podcast. So please go check it out. The link is in the description. And as a friendly reminder, if you're a fan of this show, please, and coffee, as I am, uh, please check out aliencoffeebean.com. They're alien UFO paranormal friendly company, and they have really awesome uh, roasted coffee beans and you can get a discount for 20% off us only 20% off and using the uh, discount code mystery 20 that's mystery two zero uh yeah bambi o over at alien coffee bean is is uh is a really great person and uh you know i just do whatever we can to to help them and um provide myself and you with really good coffee if you want to follow me on social media you can go to at Paranormal Now on Instagram, on Twitter, Paranormal underscore now, Facebook at Paranormal Now Radio. And if you're listening to the podcast version and you want to see the in-person uh, or on-screen interviews, please check out youtube.com slash mystery lounge, youtube.com slash mystery lounge, where we broadcast these episodes every week. Um, if you like it, please subscribe, comment down below, like, uh, share this link. All of that really helps to support this program grow in the podcast form as well as on YouTube. Uh, and, and, you know, we've been around for for some years now. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I remember when we first started this, it was just purely podcast style, but live, but but podcast style. There were no cameras. It was just you by yourself in a room, talking to someone else by yourself in a room, um, hanging out with the audience. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was funny. It, it took me a minute to adjust to the on-camera uh, interview which it, because when I was first doing this podcast, I could be in this room by myself talking to a guest and making the strangest faces, you know, doing the oddest <laughs> body positions, and you would have no idea what I was doing, and neither would the guests. When we had the transition to video, I suddenly had to be a little self-aware, um, which kind of affected the the style of the podcast a little bit, but I'm really happy um, with the direction that, that we're going. So thank you all who have continued to support this program um, and, you know, support and like and comment during these live shows to keep it going. All right, so joining me is Mario Mario Gangora, host of the podcast Yes, This Happened. Uh, yes, This Happened is a paranormal show detailing supernatural accounts from real people who swear that what they experienced really happened. These stories originate and are collected from the Caribbean, Mexico, and all of Latin America. You can find this podcast on iTunes or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Mario Gangora is a professional VO talent based out of Florida and Texas. He's currently the voice for Fox Channel's Latin America, two regional TV networks, several national and international IVR stations, including Disney Plus, Latin America, and many retail national spots currently on TV and social media. In recent years, he's been the official national Hispanic voice of Spirit, uh, Sprint, Wendy's, Ford, and Univision's Unimas Network. Mario, welcome to Paranormal Now. How are you? Thank you, Alan. It's great to be here. It's such a surreal experience. I mean, you've had from Mick West to Travis Walton to the late Stanton Friedman. <laughs> so 
so strange for me to be here, but it's wonderful, and I appreciate the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. That means you actually looked at, at the other episodes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard, I heard it. All. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining tonight. And I'm really interested in your perspective um, because, you know, your focus uh, crosses over between, you know, Latin America um, worldwide, but uh, Spanish speaking, English speaking. So you kind of bridge, um, I wouldn't say a, maybe not a gap, but a maybe a past missed opportunity for other people to hear stories. Um, and you're, you're bringing those stories to people. So how did you get into uh, this topic, this, this field of high strangeness? Well, um, you know, it's, it's really strange because I've always kind of been a skeptic. Um, but, you know, we, we have friends and, and during conversations with them, you know, when you finish eating and you stay at the table and you start, you know, the question, have you ever seen anything weird comes mm -hmm. up? And we realized that most of our friends either had seen something or, or felt something or, or gone through something or knew mm -hmm. someone close to them that had. So when, when they were, you know, telling us their story, we we're like, man, this would be great for a podcast. So that's kind of where the idea was born. Mm -hmm. And we started uh, doing it in Spanish, you know, with a Spanish version. Uh, then we met the wonderful people at Agua Media and we, you know, we partnered with them to do both English mm -hmm. and Spanish with these stories from Latin America, because Latin America has a very rich uh, culture, you know, and, and traditions and legends and stories uh, from even before the, the Spaniards, you know, even before Christopher Columbus got to America, sure. we have these these um, wonderful and, and very uh, very rich traditions from Chile to Mexico to everywhere. We have elves and gnomes and uh, cattle eating monsters and shapeshifters. So uh, it's so rich that sometimes it crosses over to to mainstream American culture. You know, like in the case of La Llorona, sure. there was a movie about La Llorona and Cucuy. If you hear our show, you're gonna know what the chaneques are. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about the chupacabras back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. It was like a huge deal. Huge. So, um, yeah, th those are just, you know, like examples of how our culture pre permeates, uh, among, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, general culture. So, so yeah, I hope, uh, you know, if, if people are interested, they, they will listen and uh, get a little scared. Yeah. Did you hear stories when you were growing up? Yeah, especially La Llorona. That was a freaky one. La Llorona is, is about this... Uh, native um mexican woman back in mm -hmm. back before before uh, the conquest who drowned well no actually right after the conquest who drowned her own kids out mm -hmm. of spite for her cheating spaniard husband so mm -hmm. now she spends the afterlife looking for her children and going i mis hijos all oh, my children so when mm -hmm. you hear that as a kid i don't know if parents use it like so you don't go far away from home or or, or or you go to sleep early or whatever. But when you hear it as a kid, you're like, oh man, I don't want to hear La Llorona, you know? Yeah, yeah. I just, I just don't want to know about it. So yeah, it was freaky. Uh, did you ever I have people, people, did you ever have people in the neighborhood, you know, say, I swear, I saw her, I saw her. <laughs> it was more more the, the the older people in my family, than my grandma. Oh, interesting. Dad. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, uh, growing, no. up, growing up in New Jersey, we had the New Jersey devil you know, and oh, so yeah. you know, we would kind of work it up in our heads and you know, scare ourselves, you know, in right. the woods. Like, oh, what was that noise? What was that shadow? You know, and and <laughs> uh, and and I love I love the the richness of you know local lore. Um, you know, for me, I I tend to believe the New Jersey Devil is not real, um, but there there are still those who are looking for it. They they believe it to to be based in reality of some sort. Um, have you? come across any of these odd cryptids that you think have have more credence than simply folklore yes we have an episode it's one of the best ones i think because it, it freaked me out even though i, I this is my mantra when i edit yeah I, and you, <laughs> well for, for everybody listening uh mario mario's shirt says i'm not scared um <laughs> Yeah, we got some comments in, in YouTube about that too, appreciating your shirt, Mario. So I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, so basically this story is about these beings called the Chaneques. And mm -hmm. this story comes from a guy in Guerrero, Mexico, which is in the Southern part of Mexico. 
Mm-hmm. And the Chanekes are like dark skinned elfish, uh, elfish creatures uh, the mm-hmm. size of a child who um, are supposed to be like the owners or, or keepers of nature, especially bodies of water. Um, they're sometimes seen as benevolent or evil, you know, mm-hmm. depending on your luck, I guess. Um, and they are said to be able to take your soul if they scare you enough. So this guy tells us a story about, I think it happened like 10 years ago. He lives in a ranch in Mexico. It's a, a you know, secluded area, a rural area. He gets there like at one or two in the morning and he starts listening to these voices, like voices of little kids playing around um, in the shoreline of this. He had like a small lake in his property. So mm-hmm. he goes to investigate. He sees a group of five or six of these chaneques, these small, you know, childlike creatures, dark skinned, big head. And uh, they get scared with him and they run away. So, it, I mean, this guy, he's a, you know, a veterinarian. Um, he went to the university. His uh, demeanor was uh, very serious when he told the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was actually no reason to not believe him, you know, and this was recent. So that's one of the, uh, that, that Chaneke uh, lore comes from back, back, like hundreds of years. And it's still being reported as recent as 10 years in, in this case. Do, uh, do there you was, think uh, oh, go ahead, Mario. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, I, rem- I just remembered, I was reading a newspaper article from about a month ago in the state of Chihuahua. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they were reporting about these Duendes de Ocampo, the, the elves of Ocampo. And some truck drivers were saying that these, uh, these little creatures, which are very similar to the Chaneques in the South, were running in front, in front of them as they were driving in the highway and causing accidents. So, you know, and this is being reported like a month ago in a newspaper in Chihuahua. So I'm like, man, was maybe, maybe, maybe it's the, like drunk <laughs> truck drivers that are blaming these beings for their accidents or is it real? You know, it's being reported as real. But ever since I remember when I was a kid, there were reports of, you know, little beings in, in Chihuahua and, and, you know, little towns around our city. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you never know. I mean. Yeah, I think could- that's a that's a good example. It is true that when people get in trouble, some people will, will come up with the wildest <laughs> excuses. <laughs> right. Uh, excuse me. 50 cents. I, I see it like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it's interesting. Um, what were these elves called again? The Duendes de Ocampo. The Ocampo. The Duendes... Ocampo is a... So the, the elves of Ocampo or the gnomes of Ocampo, I don't know. Something okay. like that. Duendes del Campo. So they they remind me a little bit of like Irish fairies. Right. Which right. are kind of like but they're like gray in skin, you know, not maybe not as dark. But that there there is this odd fairy pixie elf kind of figure that we see throughout the world um mm-hmm. what, what other regions have you covered do you think where you've come across a similar uh cryptid? well yeah there, there's another cryptid it's called a nawal mm-hmm. and uh mm-hmm. it's, it's supposed to be a shapeshifter mm-hmm. you know and they have they also have either they use their powers for good or evil depending on their personality but something that struck me as strange is they can uh, be they can turn into dogs, owls, and wolves. You know, so we have sort of like a werewolf style um, cryptid in, in in Latin America, mm-hmm. uh, which is separated, you know, geographically and by time to the werewolf lore of uh, Europe and all that. So you see patterns repeating themselves, you know, in different cultures, and you say, well, you know. There has to be something to it, you know? And yeah. these Nahual uh, characters can also drink human blood, which is similar mm-hmm. to vampires. So it's, uh, you know, it's strange. It's, uh, I was, it's interesting. Yeah, you know, I was listening to some of your voiceover work uh, before you, you came on the show. And uh, you know, do you, when you're, when you're speaking uh, to the Latino audience versus English audience, speaking audience, do you affect the way you tell a story? Not, you know, in a way that the the affectation itself helps to tell the story, to help support what you're trying to express. Well, I don't think the narration 
changes in style very much uh, mm -hmm. in English or Spanish. I think it's more or less the same. I try to be uh, as natural as possible without losing that, uh, you know, take the, the listener through the story and, and uh, be mm -hmm. a storyteller also. But I don't think it, it, uh, it differs from the Spanish to the English version at all. Mm, okay. Um, I mean, for, for me, it's like, it depends on who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to right. somebody from, from Brooklyn, you know, I might tweak a little bit, you know, how I'm telling a story, you know, that right, they can right. kind of, they feel it a little bit differently, right? Than like, than if I'm talking to somebody uh, from Mississippi, um, I might slow it down a little bit, you know, be less, you know, Northeastern. But uh, well, maybe yeah. I talk a little slower because Spanish is my native language. So I have to mm -hmm. kind of, you know, translate as I speak. So if you hear me get stuck on something, it's because I'm trying to find the word. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, other than that, I don't think there's much difference in the style or anything. It's just, you know, that's the way we started doing it with our first versions in Spanish and it worked. Mm -hmm. So we just kept it. Yeah, that, that's awesome. The I do have to because this is sort of your 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 hook. Um, I have to ask about the Ouija board. Can can you tell us about this episode? That's very interesting because that actually is a friend of ours, a personal friend of ours, who told us that story years ago. Wow! So yeah. she's the first one we went to, and we thought about, wait, we know of you know people telling us these stories. Let's call Anita. Her name is Anna. I hope she's watching. Um, but this story, when she told it to us, she was affected by it. You know, she, she remembering it, she got chills and, and uh, she really had no reason to lie to us. So yeah. it, I absolutely think it's an authentic story that it happened to her. And um, it's uh, like a cautionary tale, I guess, to not mess too much with, with stuff like that. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it was very compelling when she uh, told it to us for the first time. So what was so scary about the end? What, what happened? Well, uh, she and some friends from high school started messing around with the Ouija board and mm -hmm. it started telling them what was going to happen. Um, and, you know, if they were going to flunk the test, very simple things at first. But then it started saying, you know, someone's going to die. Uh, this is going to happen to your parents. Um, her parents start, started fighting a lot. Uh, and, you know, and the Ouija board uh, told her before before it all started. So um, after a while, she started having actually physical manifestations of someone trying to open the door at night and, and someone being in her room. So she got really, really freaked out by this. And, you know, I think they eventually burned it or something like that. I, I don't remember. But uh, it, it was very compelling in that, you know, she was telling it to us and, and you could hear her voice, uh, you know, crack. Uh, when, when she was, this was before she recorded it, but uh, uh, that's what was scary because it was it was real to us, you know? It, 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 to her, it was real. And because she was a really good friend of ours with no reason to lie, it was real to us. You can pick up on the, 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 the earnestness of the emotion. Right, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we've had people send us their stories and you can tell they're reading or, or they wrote it down. Uh, mm -hmm. Those stories don't make it to the show, but um, we always try to listen when we're not doing it, you know, with someone in person, we try to listen to uh, try to discern if it's real or not by the way it's being told and, and the details and stuff like that. And how do you find these stories other than you know, starting off with your friends? Um, did, did you seek people or did people find you? Uh, both. We've tried social media and that worked great. We actually have some stories from Mexican people li living in Europe or living in, uh, or, or Latin or Hispanic people living in other places of the world. Um, and it just, uh, basically with, we started with people we know, but the, uh, the, you know, the network started to grow. And now, uh, even the lady who does the nails to my, <laughs> to my wife, she told mm -hmm. us a really good story. Uh, because we're always asking people, hey, we have a podcast. Do you know if anyone, you know, and some people, I think people want to get rid of the, of the uh, taboo and the stigma. And some people haven't told their stories in years because they're afraid of being judged or made fun of. And they see this as a platform to, to be, uh, 
you know, to finally let it out. You know, that's that's a feeling I get from from some people. Right. I think we, we see that a lot, especially with well, any kind of experiencer. But um, in the UFO community, you see that with people who have contact with mm -hmm. you know, allegedly off world beings or, or otherwise. Um, do you believe that we are um, the humans are being visited by by off world beings or interdimensional? Yes. Whatever you, yes. you do. And, yeah. and I'll tell you why. My one of my first memories when I was little is that I was in a party. I was like in kindergarten or first grade or something. I was in mm -hmm. a party. It was a backyard. It had a blue a metal door that you opened for the car to come in. I remember that. You know, we were running around. Suddenly, everything stopped and everyone was looking up. So I look up and this disc flies by silently. Um, it's an old memory, so I don't know if they were windows or lights, but it had all around, it had lights or windows. Um, that's one of my first, first memories that I have. It's, uh, but I, you know, I, I remember it very, very vividly. It was metallic and it was, you know, it passed by and then suddenly, you know, the party continued and we kept on running and playing and stuff like that. So that was my first experience. Now, in 2019, I was with my family in a cruise on, um, on the uh, Mediterranean in Europe. So we're in the middle of nowhere where we had a we had a cabin with a terrace. So, you know, we were outside, we were looking at a storm in the background. And mm -hmm. then suddenly we looked down and there's a, it was like a rectangle under the sea and it was like pulsating greenish light, you know? And we're like looking down, it was like right next yeah. to, the, to the cruise ship. So, you know, we, we were like this and we, we, we see it pass by and it stayed in the same place like that and just pulsating. And, you know, there was no explanation for that. It was like a perfect uh, rectangle with slightly rounded mm -hmm. corners. Uh, that's my recollection. And fortunately, my wife and my daughter also saw it. My other daughter was in the bathroom, so she missed it. But, uh, you know, fortunately, they saw it. So I, I know I'm not crazy. That's that's an advantage when other people see it with you. So you saw a UFO and a USO. I, I yeah, or... I, <laughs> I think that's what it was. I mean, my yeah. brother, my brother has a theory that it was you know that those bacteria that has bio, bio yeah, bioluminescent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, but I mean, I, they usually gather close to the coast, and we were not close to the coast or to the to the beach. Um, yeah, it was yeah. a perfect rectangle. I don't think they maintain like a perfect form, you know. No. So yeah, it was definitely something strange, and it was, it was a weird, um, you know, ambient. It was a weird feeling in the air, so, sort of uh, strange yeah. with with a storm in the background and the electricity, you know. So it was yeah, something to remember actually. Yeah, that is something that is rather common that 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 feeling of like a static or an energy in the air uh, did you feel that when you were a child when you saw the the ufo did you get any sensation no not 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 on that occasion i don't remember that um now i <laughs> there's another thing i went through uh when i was little when i was a kid we moved into a new house when i was seven Mm -hmm. And this is related because I did feel something on, on that occasion. This is not a, a UFO or anything. This was in my sister's room when we moved to that house. I felt something heavy and bad and sad. I never wanted to go into that room. Um, and when I passed by, I passed by really fast. Now, this went on for years. As I grew up, that feeling started to get, you know, uh, smaller and smaller and i lost it completely when i was you know by the time i went to college yeah. when i went to college years later i you know i meet this girl she, she was an acquaintance in chihuahua where i lived but then you know i become friends with her and she says oh you lived at the fierro's house fierro was the last name of the family that lived there before mm -hmm. and i go like oh yeah yeah they sold us a house and she said oh yeah the dad killed himself there and i'm like what Nobody told us they, they sold us a house with you know where someone had committed suicide. And they so didn't, they didn't he, disclose that information. 
Yeah, exactly. So immediately I knew where it was. It was my sister's room. And then we started talking about it and my parents saw things and my sister saw a shadow in her room. So that was absolutely true. It was a, um, it was a very, very, very heavy feeling. Like, oh, I didn't want to go in there. You know, like someone was like going like this towards me. It was yeah, really yeah. strange. So, you know, it's so, it's so interesting. I, I feel really, you know, I would say roughly 75% or more of people mm -hmm. who are interested in these subjects have had an experience themselves. Right. Yeah. And I mean, e even with all that, I, like I said, I, I'm, I try to be skeptical. Of course. I have yeah. to eliminate all the possible mm -hmm. logical explanations before, mm -hmm. you know, I believe something. Um, like, for example, I have a love hate relationship with Mick West <laughs> and everything he does, you know, because I think we need people like that. We do. We do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But still, it's like uh, sometimes like, oh, man, come on, let me believe a little, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 Um, OK, so that's that's there's two sides to that. Right. So there is the. The campfire storytelling side of all this that that we enjoy. And like right. it's like we're let let us kind of enjoy that a little bit, um, but then there's right. the other side. There's the other side of it where we actually b believe a lot of of the the witnesses, often, you know, substantiated by you know cooperating witnesses or some kind of uh, evidence, trace evidence. Like yourself, I I had a co witness to an event, and that makes it more real when when someone else sees something with you. Uh, what did you see? It, it was a, a simple UFO sighting, you know, up in the sky, you know, moving mm -hmm. uh, in, in different ways, and and then it sped off, and you know that just kind of solidified my my uh, interest in this for the rest of my life, and that was the only really UFO I can say that I've ever seen. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen one since. I mean, that's that's decades now. So, but it's that impactful that it stays with you all that oh, time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the need to know. Um, and, and it's interesting with your T-shirt that says, I'm not scared. There, there's something about investigating all of these things, uh, researching or podcasting, whatever it is. You know, mythologists and psychologists have been talking about this for quite some time. But by, by talking about scary things, by confronting scary things, we're kind of, you know, confronting ourselves and our, our own fears and anxieties about the world that we live in. So there's a very healthy aspect to to all of this you know even if these we're living out these modern myths right and and i think that if, if uh, this whole ufo beginning of disclosure has has uh, taught me something is that anything is possible mm -hmm. you know reality i think we're all starting to understand that it's not only what we see and we understand uh there are these things we don't know what they are interdimensional uh you know future humans uh extraterrestrial i don't know what they are but you know it's something so strange that i think most people do not care or want to care because it's really hard to come to grips with it you know of, of the reality of it and you know looking at the you know congressional hearings and all this i'm like wow it's like from you know Four years ago to now, it's like being in a movie, in a sci-fi movie, and things are happening. And you know, Bill mm -hmm. Nelson's talking about extraterrestrials, and the director of the DNI also. It's like weird, but it's yeah, true, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure you're familiar with Jaime Musan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what do you feel about him? Because I've noticed on his like Instagram, uh, there's a lot of videos that are posted that I'm looking at. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't know about that one. Um, you know, is he is he kind of in that infotainment uh, category? I will. Be, I believe so. Uh, I met him once a long time ago. I don't. I, he, I don't think he remembers. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I was working at a TV station in uh, El Paso. He came in because he had just been to Juarez across the border and gotten a videotape from a family there that had a sighting, and he showed mm -hmm. it to us. And it was amazing. It was a UFO at night, and it was very clear. And it was like this is this is nice. So you know, um, drones were not that prevalent in, 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 you know, in society. So I do believe he has some good stuff, but you, you have to remember he has been doing a show for many, many years, like 30 years. I don't know how long, but since I was little 
And in order to have a show, either a weekly TV show or whatever, you need to come up with stuff, you know, for your show every week. So he does have a lot of good stuff, but he also has bugs in front of a security camera and, you know, and mm-hmm. saying he's a ghost, he's a ghost. So I think you have to take it with a grain of salt. He, he is a, a very respected personality. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, he has done a lot for, you know, bringing this, this uh, whole issue of, of ufology and UFOs and everything yeah. to people in Mexico. And uh, now a little bit more, uh, you know, in the world and the U.S. and everywhere. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you have to be, you have to analyze things and be a little you know, skeptical. And if it's a fly passing by at night, it's a fly, you know? Yeah, but I, there is the positive, which is the proliferation of these topics. Um, like mm-hmm. Ancient Aliens, the, the show does the same thing. There's a right. lot. There's a lot that's questionable on there in some of the theories that are presented. But right. it, it's really, it's really good because I mean, we're talking about now between like someone like I mean, Wasan and Ancient Aliens and the like, millions of people that have been exposed to these these topics on a weekly basis, and that that's fantastic. I think. Because it's it's getting to that critical mass where you have enough of the population that demands answers, then maybe we'll really start getting some answers. Right, right. And, and I mean, I've I've seen the shift in in uh, you know mentality from some people and people I know in the past few years, and and it's it's great. You know, we we have to ask, mm-hmm. you know, what is it? And is it dangerous? Is it okay? Are they our brothers? Are they us? You know, it's it's super interesting, I think. And I don't I don't know if we're ever gonna know. But even if we know a little bit, I think that would be, uh, you know, groundbreaking and, and reality changing. What do you think the origin of the Chupacabra story is? I have no idea. Um, I think the Chupacabra phenomenon has some similarities with um, cattle mutilations. You know, remember that Chupacabras would eat animals, certain part of the animal. Uh, I don't know if people had to find an explanation for that. And someone saw, you know, a coyote, or a hungry coyote somewhere and you called it a chupacabra. Or if it's actually a cryptid that, you know, feasts on, on farm animals. I don't know. I really don't know. But it's yeah. super, super, and it kind of died down, right? I mean, it, it, it like kind of did, yeah. Crazy but in the, the 90s. Oh, it was crazy in the 90s. It was, it was all over into the early 2000s. Um, right. And, and I think that that's fair. Like, you know, even if somebody saw like a cougar in England, right now, now all kinds of people, if they see anything kind of black and shadowy moving through the brush, they're thinking, oh my gosh, it's the cougar. Uh, it may not have been, but it's, it's on their mind. They're thinking about it. So you're, I think you're always going to get um, extraneous reports uh, right. that aren't the thing that, you know, they think it is. That doesn't mean it's not real. Um, cause I know there are a couple of reports of the Chupacabra where it's, it's like close encounter yeah, mm-hmm. where they're, they're, they're seeing, they can describe the skin and the eyes and the teeth. And I'm thinking, I, I understand like the mange, uh, like a coyote or a dog that has mange. Like I, maybe that's one of the best explanations for it. Um, but I don't know. Do you think that's convincing? Yeah. And what you described it right now. It kind of mm-hmm. reminded me of what people see at Skinwalker Ranch. Um, I don't know if you've seen the show or, or, or you're familiar. I'm sorry, I suppose you sure, are. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it kind of, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, what is it? Uh, like a wolf monster creature with red eyes or whatever. And people have described mm-hmm. the Chupacabra sometimes in that, you know, in those, with those terms. So I don't know, maybe there's something there, uh, you know, with, orals or, st- or stuff like that i think i, I love that show the, the secrets of Skin- skinwalker ranch mm-hmm. i think it's very compelling i know they they have maybe to um do some thing for television to make it more entertaining yeah. but i think main, sure. you know the the main body of, of data they're getting and everything mm-hmm. I, I think that is real and i do follow some of the people that have been like the third party uh, investigators or providers at, at the show that bring the the, uh, the drones and the equipment and stuff, and I follow mm-hmm. them on Twitter and you know and they comment things that happened and didn't happen and and uh, most of it is is tends to to tell me that it's, it's basically true. So so I do like that show a lot and and uh, I think 
there are similarities with other places in Latin America where things like that happen to, um, you know, like the, uh, I don't know, I don't remember the name right now, the lights, the Marfa lights in Texas, for example. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's you know, a similar terrain, kind of desert. Uh, desert. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's, like I said, it's something that you, you start finding patterns of things that are similar and, and there has to be something behind it because they're separated you know, by time and geography and stuff like that. And, and they, they still, um, they're still with us today. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is that some of these things are persistent. Uh, right. So it, maybe the Chupacabra, you know, isn't real because it's not persistent enough. Maybe that's evidence that it was a cultural phenomena, uh, but Sasquatch, Bigfoot, I mean, these things have been consistently reported pre-colonial uh, right. days in, in America. So, you know, there's I think there's really something there. Right. And even, well, the Himalaya, you know, other parts of the world, too. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there anything like that down in uh, Central or South America? I don't. I, I believe there is. Uh, I heard something about uh, a creature like that in Ecuador or something like that, but I haven't heard it. I, you know, I haven't researched it uh, enough to be able to, to tell you with certainty. But I mm -hmm. think uh, I think that there have been sightings of, of things like that in Central America, Ecuador, uh, uh, Guatemala, some somewhere in that uh, area. Do you think that people's beliefs manifest these things? I. Th think that it has it maybe has some relation to that yes mm -hmm. um it's like these people that do the ce5 for example uh I, i've never seen one but apparently it works uh so i think the phenomenon is related to consciousness which mm -hmm. is something we don't even know we don't even uh, we're not able to to explain clearly what consciousness is so so I think it is related to that and that part of us that is connected to, to that uh, higher plane or whatever, whatever consciousness is, you know. But mm -hmm. I do think it is related to that and, and uh, that eventually maybe we'll find out hopefully soon. What was the, um, the creepiest uh, case that you've looked into for your podcast? Uh, it's one that hasn't been published, but it's a lady. Okay. Well, this is the one with, from the, uh, the lady that does the nails uh, for my wife. Um, when she was little in Colombia, mm -hmm. she, she, they moved to a house. It was a big place. Uh, it had like an outhouse. And the parents told them, don't, don't get close to the outhouse because there's a lot of glass there and you can get hurt. So being kids, they did exactly that. So they <laughs> went there and, and they would see a hand going like this, you know, and, and they got freaked out. They told their parents, their parents didn't believe them. So it, it happened, uh, you know, time and time again, until finally the dad gets, you know, gets fed up with it. And he brings a gardener to clean that area. So the kids are not seeing anything. Maybe they're, you know, he thought they were confusing a plant or, or something moving with a hand. So what happens is a gardener finds a human or well, human remains in that part of the outhouse, the abandoned outhouse where the kids would, you know, used to play and would see the, the hand like this. And, and that's, that's a freaky story because the lady, you know, she's, she was very adamant that it really happened and, and marked her for life basically. So yeah. it was one of those things where like, wow, you know, maybe he needed, I don't know, to rest and I don't know, but it was, I, I, it was compelling. We, we had this uh, story about it was some, some, something called Bloody Mary, right? And you could, huh. I, I'm not, I can't remember the origins of it. Um, I'm guessing somewhere in the UK. <laughs> but <laughs> it, if if you chanted Bloody Mary enough in the in the mirror, you could, right. you know, your face would just like transform, and this thing would like come and take over you. Um, and really, what you were doing was like staring at your face long enough that like, you, you know, things your, your optical the optics are 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 getting funky it's not there's nothing supernatural right. going on but we yeah, would do that and the then, off, no? you have to have the lights like off right 
so you can just barely see your own face. So your, your, your brain is trying to fill in the gaps, right? So it creates this kind of psychedelic effect. Yeah. So um, that, but that is so different. That is so different than, than someone who, for instance, a, uh, a friend of mine, a childhood friend, when his mother's mother passed away, his grandmother, um, his mother uh, went up into um, the grandmother's bedroom, right, you know, right after the funeral. And, you know, obviously thinking about her and, and then all of a sudden this overwhelming smell of roses just like filled the room. Mm -hmm. And then the rocking chair that the grandmother used to sit in started just gently moving. Oh man, I got chills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, that that's not I don't think I, I, look, I mean the, the the mind is very powerful. So maybe maybe, but to to me that it, she felt that that was the presence of her mother uh letting her know she's still around. Wow. We have a story kind of like that from a lady mm -hmm. from Mexico who was living in Italy and someone knocked one night she was alone with her kid someone knocked at the door and she asked who is it and she said so yo like it's me in spanish mm -hmm. and she she didn't open the door because you know they didn't have any friends or anything so she got scared called the husband yeah. the husband came nobody was there but her son said he saw an old lady later that day because of the difference the time difference with italy and mexico Mm -hmm. Her mom calls her and tells her the grandma died. So she interpreted that as, you know, her grandma coming to say goodbye at her wow. house. And yeah. So, yeah, I was also like, wow. Did you ever hear about when, when you were, were growing up? I did. Uh, of, of phone calls from the dead? No. <laughs> no, but no. Sounds weird. Yeah, really? it, it, was, it was a phenomena that seemed to really only, I guess, work with landlines back when everyone had landlines before cell phones. And people would get these just calls, pick up the phone, and it would sound kind of almost distant and, sta and staticky, and it would, it would sound like a loved one. And it could be anything from, uh, hey, I'm, I'll be home running, I'm running late, blah, blah, blah and the person had already passed they, they'd already died it was as if they were living out their regular life on the other side um or they or you they would hear something like you know i love you i'm okay and you know like kind of crackling through the the phone you, you didn't have that growing up no but now that you i mean it, i got like when my uh, paternal grandmother died Mm -hmm. A couple of days later, I had a dream and I had a conversation with her in that dream. She was calling me on the phone and she was telling me, I, I asked her, how, how, how are you on the phone? How are you speaking to me? And she said, well, you know, uh, everything works with electricity, something like that. So I made a short film. I, I think it's still on YouTube. It's called The Call. And it's based on that conversation I had with my grandmother um, in that, in, in the dream. And, and when you said that, I'm like, wow, I remember that. You know, I, I did this short film like in two thousand three or something. Yeah. But um, but so you've been yeah. you've been do, you've been interested in this in a, for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah exactly. I mean, I, like I said, I try to be skeptical, but I let mm -hmm. myself go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen stuff that I can't explain, and and I've yeah. searched for explanations, and I can't find them. So, you know, that goes in the box, the unexplained box. And okay, I believe that. You know. Yeah, uh, a question from Chet. What do you think about the children with dark eyes? Oh wow, I heard about that. The, the ones they used to go to the to homes, right, and ask for ask for water or something, and then they would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It freaked me out when I heard it. Um, but I haven't heard any more stories about the children with you know with the black mm -hmm. eyes. Uh, what what happened if you let them in? I, I don't remember. I, you know what, Kathy, who asked the question, she might actually know. Um, I don't recall anyone actually letting them in because I think oh. in, in most reports, there's this 
eerie instinct that everybody feels like this is not uh, right. Right, um, right. Don't let them in. But I, because I, I, I can't think off the top of my head of ever hearing a report of someone letting it in. Um, if so, I, maybe it's an omen of bad luck. Who knows? Oh, nope, I think we just. Sorry. I, oh, sorry. we're back. Okay. I'm back. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, yeah, I remember hearing about that and being, you know, a little freaked out, but I don't, how long ago was this, like 20 years ago, maybe? Oh, I mean, even up until somewhat recently, people have been reporting these encounters. Yeah, I mean, it's not unlike Men in Black. Right. Again, like, I think, I think what happens is, because, for instance, triangle UFOs, cigar-shaped UFOs, especially, mm -hmm. um, have been reported you know, going back hundreds of years and, and 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 further, but you wouldn't have known that if you were in the late '80s when all of a sudden black triangles are everywhere, right? Like, ah. it, I think it's just it's something that hits the zeitgeist. It gets talked a lot about for a while, and then it kind of fades away. But it doesn't mean the phenomena stopped, right? You know? So I, I think I think that's the case because there are still reports here and there of of really odd encounters. Um, it's like cattle mutilations. It seemed that it kind of had faded away a little bit, but over the past five years, six years, I mean, there's been definitely an uptick in mm -hmm. reports for cat cattle mutilations. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's it's a very interesting question. Uh, I'm going to do more research on everything. Uh, that might be a good podcast episode too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to try to find someone who has seen something like this. Wow. Very good question. Okay. Kathy says uh, somebody said you could die. Or even get sick, or you just go missing. Interesting. I guess. I guess my question is if, if yeah, the person went missing, they would have had to, to, to have known that the person who went missing had the encounter. Right. They would have had to report it first, or someone else would have had to known about that encounter. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, huh. that, that's that's an encounter I don't ever want to have. <laughs> I know. It's like the Tanekis, you know, if you see a Taneke, run the other mm -hmm. way because they can steal your soul. Right. Well, I mean, gosh, did you ever see the movie Dogma by Kevin oh, Smith? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. in, in the movie, there's like right. these like, teenage hockey players um, that are like the, the these demons. And like, honest uh -huh. to God, you know, that was a comedy. The, those are like two of the, like, the scariest, creepiest characters I've ever seen on film. Because uh, there's something about there's something about a child being evil that is, yes. is frightening. Right, it's like Pet Cemetery. Remember that movie, the original oh, one? God. The original, yeah. Oh, that was scary. That was yeah. that that was nightmare inducing for sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like you know, now that we're talking about scary movies, mm -hmm. what we do in the podcast is basically make people feel safely scared. You know, when you go to a movie, mm -hmm. you know it's it's coming. Your heart is pounding. But you know mm -hmm. the guy on the screen, the monster or whatever, it's not going to come out and eat you or kill you or anything. You're just, it, it's yeah. it's fun sometimes to feel, you know, safely scared. And yeah. I think listening to these, you know, real stories um, told by real people, but you're mm -hmm. in your house and you're safe. And it, it, it's kind of that, that entertainment part of it mm -hmm. that also makes it, uh, you know, have you know, the success we're starting to have now. And, and, uh, yeah. um, and it's, it's fun, you know, it's, it's interesting, but it's, it's also fun, uh, in the sense that you're not really in danger and, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not going to die or anything like that, but you listen to people's stories and, and maybe identify with something and, and feel, uh, you can talk to someone about it or maybe call us and then be on the show or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and anybody, anybody listening right now, oh, yeah. um, if, if they, if they want to contact you to share their, their story on your podcast, um, how do they do that? Uh, we have a, a website. It's called yesthishappened.com. So, you know, they, they can contact us through there and, and uh, okay. we can go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The scariest, mm, I'm going to say sober, <laughs> the scariest sober moment I had watching a film was paranormal activity oh. uh yes believe it or not and and yeah uh my wife and i went we, we went we went there uh because it was like we we're in the theater we didn't know what we we're gonna go say okay we're gonna, let's walk in here and check this out um had no idea really um didn't hear anything about the movie 
oh my god there were moments where i just my heart just stopped and i was like <laughs> gripping onto the chair and I, I had i'm very rarely that freaked out by a movie but that was one of the best seeing it in the theater you know not not at home uh but the worst uh -huh. for me was the blair witch project when that first came out into theaters and uh -huh. i was on acid <laughs> So not a good idea. Wow. <laughs> and uh -huh. I, it freaked me out so much. I literally had to, to walk out like and like take a breath before I can go back. It was it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those what was your, what was your styles? Uh -huh. Oh, my God. The best. Yeah. What, what was your scariest experience watching a movie? I think it was a grudge. Oh, I don't know why that actually. freaked me out for yeah, yeah, yeah. the grudge. Um, but also par paranormal activity, especially mm -hmm. because they they do this awesome thing. They handle it really well, where nothing happens. Yeah, and, and that that's what's scary, you know, just yeah. waiting yeah. for it, for it, or, or looking at you know what's happening, what's moving, or what's mm -hmm. and nothing's happening, and and you know it's coming. It's, it, they handled it really, really well, and and you know even the lack of music sometimes uh, just made it mm -hmm. more real and raw and, and uh, freaky. So yeah. They, they yeah. uh, Andy Andy Morrow in chat says Rosemary's Baby. That was that was the one. For oh, him. yeah. I mean, stuff that is that is based on real stories or, or stuff like that, mm. uh, like real events, like The Conjuring. You know. Yeah, yeah. Is there a a uh, a, a, a cryptid, a beast, a, a ghost story that you're looking for that that you that you're really interested in? A, a specific mm. paranormal. Well, to tell you the truth, apart from the show, I'm really, really interested in, in the UAP aspect of everything. So I haven't looked mm -hmm. a lot into cryptids or, or monsters other than what people tell us. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually thinking about starting maybe something about you know the, the UFO issue and stuff like that. But um, no, not, not really. I mean, maybe the Mothman was something that impacted me. Uh, and there have been reports of a Mothman type being in northern Mexico. Um, okay. So, so yeah, maybe, maybe that I would like to find out more about that. Is that um, is that the uh, the Mothman? I remember there was a report of something like a witch that was that was eyewitnessed. I think this was in Mexico. Oh, uh, I think it was like, the, like the flying witch. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's so weird. I mean, it's either a balloon in the form of a witch or, or something really strange. And mm -hmm. there have there have been other reports of humanoids, not necessarily you know in the in the form of a witch, flying around. So yeah, that's that's interesting. And there are videos of this. So, well, what is this Mothman like uh, cryptid in in Mexico? I think it's very similar to the one reported here. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, red eyes. Uh, Humanoid form, wings. Um, that's that's what I, I remember uh, them telling me, um, and just the feeling of you know people who see it, the feeling of despair or sadness. Uh, reports like like you know in that in that sense. So I think it's pretty yeah. similar to what uh, is being reported or has been reported here in the well, states. But we're getting a little bit more of a, a paranormal glimpse into the UAP phenomena, it seems to mm -hmm. me, because the the pilots and, and witnesses are, you know, opening up a little bit more about how they physiologically felt different and how they were affected kind of, you know, emotionally. Um, and that's an odd thing to hear, right, typically from from military personnel. Um, and, and the Navy has actually created a set of uh, questions and um uh, you know uh oh, i think i lost you here oh you're back okay i'm back i'm back okay yeah to like a questionnaire like okay what was this experience like how are you feeling blah blah, blah. and it's almost like you know things that move on would ask mm -hmm. uh you know and and I, I think that that opens the door just a little bit you know to to widen it beyond it's some kind of super advanced drone that maybe there's something Mm -hmm. yeah other otherworldly going on here yeah it's super weird i mean but the drone theory i think people and the government are using it as an explanation for something so we kind of forget about it but mm -hmm. you have to realize that 
these things have been in the air since the 40s, you know, officially, uh, maybe even before that, you know, there, there are reports before that. And I just recently saw a, a story about the Nuremberg painting. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Uh, this, oh, sure. Yeah. The 1400s, I think, in, in uh, Germany. And, uh, you know, it depicts what looks like a battle with UFOs and cylindrical stuff mm -hmm. and round orbs. And so it's, I don't know, it's, uh, I think there's something definitely happening. And uh, for some reason, it's being uh, held back. And, and, you know, I don't know why, but it's weird. Mario, thank you so much for being on with me today. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Alan. It was it was great. I enjoyed it a lot, and and I really appreciate it. It's uh, it's it's so wonderful. It's like I said at the beginning, it's surreal being here on your podcast with so many awesome guests you had, and and uh, and now you know you invite me, and and I feel humbled, and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I, I really appreciate it, and I, I'm so glad I have now discovered your podcast, which is it really is a very well produced podcast. So everybody, please check thank out. You. Yes, this happened. This is Alan B. Smith for Paranormal Now. Thank you, everyone, for joining us in the chat. As always, I appreciate your support. I appreciate your comments and questions. You guys are the best. And um, remember, this program is rebroadcast on the UNX network at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays, 11 p.m. Pacific Time on Thursday night. So if you miss this live stream, you can catch it there. And then the podcast is dropped the next morning, which would be tomorrow, Friday, and you can catch it on replay. So until next time, everyone, peace and love and live in the mystery.